and every two hours we're going to be live for 15 to 20 minutes here on Facebook and on YouTube and just checking in with people as they clean all over the world. So we have so much to get to. Let's keep getting through it all. Next, we are turning to Kurdistan and there we're talking to the leader of Let's Do It, Azerbaijan. How is it going there, my friends? Hello, my name is Aijan. I'm so happy to be a part of uh, World Cleanup Day and uh, represent uh, Let's Do It uh, in our wonderful, beautiful uh, country. And we started from eight o'clock, it's already 11. Uh, all over Kyrgyzstan, people cleaning. Uh, you can see, I'll show you the, what, what's going on. How we, this is the garbage we collected in the morning. So all these people in the background are just regular people from the city to came, who came to clean. <laughs> yes, these regular uh, people who were uh, getting information through our uh, Instagram and Facebook. And we've been inviting them uh, for clean up and um, clean up. It's like a holiday. It's a big uh, event and a lot of kids are excited and uh, use. You will see that there are a lot here about uh, 150 people cleaning, but they are now in the mountains. So you cannot see uh, all of them. And unfortunately, our country should be cleaner. But uh, after this uh, pandemia, a lot of people upsetly uh, ruining the nature with their garbage. Do you already uh, know uh, what is uh, the car trash that you have found most? Like what kind of trash? Uh, most of the time it's the uh, plastic uh, bottles from the drinks. Then this is the, um, um, how you call this, uh, cigarette uh, buds. endings, whatever, the cigarette butts. Then these, uh, I mean, I can even show you what to ask. Better to show. I think yes. it will be more interesting. So this is the... Uh, regular stuff plastic here we're putting the mixed things that we just cannot uh, you know divide this is again plastic plastic uh, a lot of different stuff i mean i mean you can find even um, animals uh, unfortunately dead animals you know bodies it's like i mean you should really be i mean we've been wearing masks because sometimes it's very dangerous for your health so last year you had uh, a huge number of participants from Kyrgyzstan. Uh, is it, was it 10% of population? But how is it this year? Yes. Uh, this year, unfortunately, uh, government did not support our event uh, because they are afraid of pandemia. And uh, people are not, um, would say, uh, focused now on ecology. They focused on survival. So next year, what's the, what's the goal? How many percentage of people from population will be cleaning on World Cleanup Day? Uh, we will be happy it will be if it will be 15%. Uh, I think we should make it. But, uh, yeah. but Ajan, I think I'm going to uh, leave you on this positive note of 15% of population cleaning uh, next year. And uh, yeah. enjoy the day. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, so I'm sending best greetings to all our colleagues all over the world. Estonia and all, all wonderful people there. Thank you, guys. Love you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you very much, all our friends there in Kurdistan. That was a fantastic uptake. Keep up the great work. I know last year was such a successful year for them. 10% of the population of the country came out to clean, including their president. Can you imagine 10% of your country coming out and getting behind one cause? So well done for you know such a, um, a nation that we don't hear too much about, particularly in the Western world. They are really doing their bit there and uh, putting so many others to shame. They're doing such a great job. Let's come back here now to Tallinn and Estonia because I'm joined by the mayor of Tallinn. This is uh, Michal Kolvart. Did I pronounce that right? Oh, hello, nice to yes. meet you. Michal Kolvart. Kolvart. <laughs> I was close. <laughs> um, I see you're wearing the World Cleanup Day mask. Uh, yeah. This city is so proud of World Cleanup Day. Why is it such a special movement for Tallinn and for Estonia? Of course, for Tallinn and for Estonia, it's uh, very special because it's the uh, uh, largest. Uh, uh, citizen initiative uh, and uh, it uh, came uh, from Tallinn, from Estonia. And today we are very proud that uh, our uh, city government uh, office uh, is uh, also place of uh, call and media center uh, of this uh, great uh, event. And, and this is the briefing center, isn't it? The yes, it's uh, our briefing center. 
uh, and uh, for us uh, is uh, most important uh, to give uh, to our citizens a message, a signal that uh, nature, our environment uh, depends uh, on the choices of, of every citizen. And uh, of course we want that uh, our uh, <laughs> citizens uh, participate in the, this event. And so many of them do and they take part in great numbers but even beyond the World Cleanup Day, I know that the city is involved in the Green City competition. Tell me about that. Yes, uh, we have a uh, great uh, ambition uh, to be European Green Capital. That's very ambitious, isn't it? Yes, of course. And uh, we are one of the four finalists uh, and the only one city from uh, Baltic Sea region. But uh, anyway, uh, it's not only about uh, this competition. Uh, it's uh, about our biggest aim uh, to be green. And we are green, uh, actually, because uh, about 30% uh, of our city is under the forest and uh, more than 65% is uh, actually green area. We need, uh, we must uh, to save uh, uh, our, our nature and uh, in the future uh, we want to be also a good example for the other uh, European cities. Uh, when we look at your city, Tallinn, uh, such a beautiful city with the medieval old town, what are the biggest challenges to keeping it clean for you as the mayor? Uh, I think that uh, many of our friends, uh, tourists, uh, uh, they see that uh, our city is uh, quite clean. But, uh, but cleanliness, uh, uh, it's not only what we see on the streets. Uh, it's also our, uh, our sea, uh, it's also our climate. Uh, so it means that uh, we have many things to do. For example, our uh, public transport is free now, but uh, after some years it must be also uh, ca carbon neutral. So, uh, and uh, we have also good partners, uh, uh, our citizens, uh, our airport, uh, our seaport, uh, only all together uh, we can save our nature. Well, it's fantastic. Thank you so much. Mayor of Tallinn, Michal Kolvart. Yes. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank and you. Just Thank while you stand there, because you made a good point about uh, the Baltic Sea and keeping the sea clean here as well. And one great initiative that they've been doing here in Tallinn and across Estonia is a company that are called Sea Starts Here. You know the manholes on the ground for the sea water, the, the, the rainwater runs into it, leads back to the sea. So many people take their cigarette butts after they have a smoke and they throw it into the manhole. For some reason they think it's acceptable or it's going to just disintegrate, but all that ends up back in the Baltic Sea. So this company have come up with a very clever idea of how to raise awareness of the problem. Look at this. We're now joined by Andra Bichen from the Sea Starts Here campaign. Can you tell us more about this campaign? Uh, this campaign is a, um, it's a reminder, it's an uh, invitation to ask questions. What uh, goes around comes around, that um, you pay attention to what you leave behind and uh, it always comes back. And uh, this campaign is about microplastic uh, cigarette butts and different stuff we leave on the streets and uh, we marked about 15 cities with uh, markings near the sewer areas so people won't uh, throw their cigarette butts into the sewers because uh, all the cigarette butts are going straight to the sea so this is our main idea to inform people that uh, please don't throw anything to the sewers because they always come back uh, to our dinner table, to our nature, to our forest, to everywhere. And uh, we hope to raise awareness of Estonian people. So indeed, uh, cigarette butts take 15 years to disintegrate. And across the world, about 4.5 trillion cigarette butts are wasted around, uh, each year. So how do you exactly mark it? And how do you, how do you make people to actually take a notice? We marked uh, with a special course and uh, it will stay on the ground about uh, two or three years and uh, people notice it by just walking around it. They are used to, th to throw the cigarette butts into the sewers but uh, when they try to do it they will see the marking and uh, see the results and think about it. 
So clarifying through the sewers, they would end up in the Baltic Sea otherwise. Exactly. That's the danger. Exactly. Have people taken notice of your campaign and how long are you planning to run it? Yes, uh, people have noticed it and uh, we've gained a lot of uh, great reactions. Even from abort, from uh, countries uh, aside Estonia, mostly from Europe. And uh, people from Estonia are really happy because they see the connection and the, the need for it. And they see the cigarette uh, pollution and uh, uh, countries from, um, from Europe said, yes, we want to do it also. And how long we, we shall do it, um, let's see. We'll be, we'll be thinking uh, what next. The Sea Starts Here campaign runs all across the country in Estonia, in 15 local uh, towns. What about the local governments? Were they supportive of your campaign? Yes, they were. Uh, we started from the smallest and we ran up to the biggest city. And uh, by doing it, uh, we gained really fast uh, the acceptance and the people really understood this is necessary and they saw uh, how really simple and how really beautiful it can be by using uh, street art methods to raise awareness. So it worked beautifully. Do you have any inspirational words for other countries around the world who are considering uh, introducing similar uh, campaigns? Yes, definitely. Uh, the idea is so simple, there's, n there's no need for any extra words for it because it just talks itself. So. Just, just do it, try to speak with your local governments, uh, show some pictures you, f you will find from the internet. There's a lot of different small towns who have done this campaign, so just do the Google research and um, just present the information to your local government. Under Behen from the Sea Starts Here campaign, thank you. Thank you. Such a simple idea, but very effective. C starts here, and it just shows you the power of one person who was so annoyed by what he was seeing and wanted to make a difference that he has pushed this, he's developed it, and it's become such an effective uh, tool. Even though it's just a marking on the ground, it really catches the eye and it hammers home the message that the sea starts here, even though you could be miles away from the Baltic Sea. This is the World Cleanup Day show coming to you live from Tallinn in beautiful Estonia. We're with you for the entire 24 hours, coming live every two hours for 15 minutes. And if you're watching this, send in all your clips and your videos and your photographs. Let us know how the cleanup is going where you are. And we're going to check in with more countries uh, very shortly. But now we're shifting gears a little, changing the tempo, because this year has been a year like no other, of course, with COVID-19 affecting the entire world in so many devastating ways. Two days ago, I flew uh, from the United States, well, actually, sorry, a week ago, and it has hit the US extremely badly. Uh, countries in Europe like Italy, Spain at the moment, suffering so terribly at the hands of this virus. So it has caused a lot of people to kind of stop and think. I'm sure you'll agree reflect on what's important in life, uh, the different things that we, we stand for, the different things we want to be involved in. And for the very first time on World Cleanup Day, people have been asking themselves not only about a cleanup in their communities, but some sort of inner cleanup. Now, an inner cleanup can mean so many different things to different people, but we thought it might be interesting to talk to the head of the Catholic Church here in Estonia. Estonia is a fascinating country when it comes to religion because after the, the Soviet Union occupied Estonia, they really drove out, in the Reformation, they drove religion out of the country. So it's an atheist country. People who are religious are a minority. People who are Catholic are a minority within that minority. But Bishop Philip Jordan is from France. He's been here since 1996. He is the head of the Catholic Church. And what's interesting is that he is a civil engineer by training. That's what he studied in university in France. And he often undertook projects to do with the environment and ocean cleanups. So this is something that he's familiar with, the environmental issues, and it's something that's close to his heart. So a few days ago here in Tallinn, I sat down with the bishop to talk to him about some sort of inner cleanup and the World Cleanup Day in general. First of all, I, I would say that uh, Estonian people are very proud also of that because it's something which uh, began in Estonia and who became very popular in many places because in some sense 
the sense that the people understood that, well, myself also, I, I can do something. And it's, uh, it's very nice also, not only from the point of view of the envir environment, but also from the point of view of solidarity. Because it's uh, strange that Estonian people are very individualistic as um, the Nordic people. But on the other side, there is also this sense, a cultural sense, it's part of the culture also, to uh, get together for, and together do things that otherwise each one of us alone could not do. And the Catholic idea. Church itself uh, as a body, of course, the primary focus is the inner cleanup and of the soul. But like last October in, at the Vatican, they had a huge conference, a month long conference where they were talking about the lots of issues to do with the Amazon. But one of them was deforestation, the protection of the environment in, in South America. So it's something now that the Catholic Church is becoming more involved. Yeah, certainly. But also here, but I must say that um, when I came in, in, in Estonia, I was also not surprised, but I saw that uh, the, the care of envir environment was very present really in uh, the mentality, in mentalities here. Actually, it was even one of the um, catalysators of the revolution against the Soviet Union. Uh, the opposition to some uh, projects, Soviet projects at the end of the 80s, uh, which involved a very uh, great damage to the nature. And so, uh, the, even if it was still the, the Soviet time, but uh, Estonians began to revolt against uh, that. So. The protection of the environment was actually also a very strong political motivation wow. in the 90s. Yeah. And finally, Bishop, uh, for people watching this on the World Cleanup Day show, we're talking all about cleanups in communities and villages and towns and cities across the world. But this year, for the first time, maybe it's because of COVID when people are more time to stop and think and look within, they've been talking about an inner cleanup of some sort. Mm -hmm. Now, to different people, that can mean different things. But for people watching this now, any little bit of advice from your point of view if they're cleaning up outside, obviously that's good for mental health, less clutter and everything else, but to do some sort of inner cleanup as you would see it, what would yeah. you say to them? No, I would say that uh, many people, all of us, I would say, now are thinking a little bit what does this uh, um, crisis of uh, um, COVID what does it mean for me as a person, for, for the, my philosophy of life? It's a question for Christians, for religious people, and also for non-religious people, to, to think a little bit more this inner cleaning. And perhaps we have discovered during the lockdown that uh, there are so many things that we should clean, clean out from our life, from our soul. I would say they, they cannot be um, purity of uh, the environment if there is no purity of the, of the heart. Let's hope that uh, uh, every one of us will make a, a step more toward the purity of heart during this, uh, this time and perhaps these initiatives can be a good, uh, good help and at least that people even not inside of the religious context feel a necessity of uh, inner purification, inner cleaning. Bishop Philip Jordan, thank you so much. Thank you to you. Getting very deep there with Bishop Philip Jordan from France, but in Estonia since 1996, and now the head of the Catholic Church here in this Baltic country. So thank you so much, Bishop, for your time and for participating in World Cleanup Day. Still so much to come, but let's move on now quickly to our next country. This time we are checking in with Chris Apodo. He is in Mauritius. Hi, how are you? Good, good. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. Uh, Chris talking from uh, Mauritius. Uh, so we, we are live uh, on the north uh, coast of Mauritius. Uh, the flagship cleanup uh, is being held at, uh, at a hotel. Uh, the Zilwa Attitude Hotel. Uh, uh, we, we chose uh, Attitude uh, group of hotels uh, due to their green uh, program. So we are here today with uh, uh, all age groups, uh, families, uh, children. How many people are there? We are uh, around uh, 90 people. 
So tell us Wait. a little bit more about the Mauritius. Uh, I mean, the, the, I, as I understand, you guys been participating in, in, in the Let's Do It World campaigns for the past nine years. Is that so? Uh, it's been growing year on year. Uh, when we started, we had uh, around uh, 3,000 uh, participants. We've been rolling uh, the campaign. Uh, we've been advocating with uh, the government, the civil societies, uh, the corporate sectors, the club service, and and today I'm uh, I'm proud to to mention that uh, we managed to gather over 180 groups around the island, and we should be having between uh, 15,000 to 18,000 uh, participants around the island. What's the biggest uh, problem or issue there when it comes to waste? Uh, I think uh, the first uh, problem is uh, the facilities uh, in place to segregate waste. The th second big uh, issue is uh, trash blindness. Uh, we just mentioned that in our briefing today that we are so used to see trash around us and it's becoming uh, the norm, uh, uh, the new normal. So, uh, and this is what we are, we are fighting for right now. Not only the cleanup uh, campaigns, but also the sensitization and education around uh, the island, together with all uh, schools in Mauritius. Well, that's great, and um, I mean, good luck to you, and uh, and have a good day, Chris Apadu from Mauritius. Thank you. You too. Have a nice day. Thank you very much to our reporter and to Chris in. Mauritius. Well, here we are in the studio. We're coming to you from government buildings in Tallinn. Look at this. Hello, everybody. Hey. Let's, let's try that one more time. Hello, everybody. Hey. Let's just give it one more time to be sure. Every time we get more energy. Hello, everybody. Hey. You see, they've been working for hours. Bear that in mind. Let's go check out and see what's happening. Um, normally, in years gone by, this room would have been packed with volunteers, but because of COVID-19, many are working remotely, many are working in different centres. But this is the call centre here in Tallinn at the moment, where they're checking in with countries all over the world. And you might notice over there, the mayor, we spoke to a few minutes ago, the mayor of Tallinn is doing his work. He's on FaceTime with a country. What country is it? Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan. He's talking to Kazakhstan. He's uh, getting the information, finding out what's been happening. So he'll be feeding that into the database so we can bring it to you. We have more volunteers here. Hello, everybody. How are you? Good. good. What is it? Good, good. What is your name? Yu. What My is name it? is Yu. Yu? Yeah. And where are you from, Yu? I'm from Taiwan. Wow. Yeah. Are you living here in Estonia or are you here just for the World Cleanup Day? I'm just for uh, study. What are you studying? Social sciences. Social sciences, wow. Yep. And how did you get involved in this? Like uh, from my school web page. Okay. The page said that I have the volunteer thing and I think it's interesting. Yeah. So I, I <laughs> They said you have to or would you like to? Uh, I just feel interested <laughs> yeah, and try to. And what are you doing here at the moment? What are you checking up on? Uh, I'm doing a uh, social media thing and I check from the web page whether I have the uh, sign or the picture uh, in China or in Taiwan. Okay. And then I try to do translate. Okay, you're trying to translate it to bring it uh, to all the people who are yeah, following yeah, the yeah. cleanup day there. And also, um, you're eating chocolates. <laughs> what are you eating? <laughs> This is a healthy snack, is it? Of course, yes. Yeah. Yes. What is your name, sir? Oh, Ibukun is my name. And where are you from? From Nigeria. And do you live here in Estonia? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I oh, do. wow. How did you go from Nigeria to Estonia? I know by aeroplane, but... Of course, yes. yes. <laughs> but what brought you here? Um, to study. Okay. Yeah. Social science as well? No, politics. Politics, wow. Oh, yeah. So we're looking at a future leader here? Of course, yes. Of course. <laughs> no, maybe, no, no buts. No, maybe, no buts. It's of course. Yeah. Would you like to uh, lead back in your home country in Africa or somewhere in Europe? Yeah, back home and also here, mixed. Yeah. Uh, just to make the world a better place to make live. The world you know? a better place, but well, yeah, you're doing so a great job now. Yeah. You're watching a video, don't move the screen. Look at this, Mustafa. <laughs> He's watching a video of a bear and a cone. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. I hope that's to do with work, but I can't verify that. Very quickly, he's monitoring the page. He's monitoring the bear. 
Hello there. You're from Belgium, I believe. No, I'm not. I'm from okay. Estonia. I got that wrong. <laughs> you're, you're, you're a partner here in Belgium. Yes, exactly. So you're from Estonia. How yes. did you get involved in this? Well, I have been cleaning. Uh, I have been participating many years already, but now I thought I want to see what's you know what's happening here, not on the field, basically. And what do you think when you're here in the middle of it all, the epicenter? It's uh, it's great. It's nice. It's nice. <laughs> How's the? What are you monitoring at the moment? Uh, I'm doing social at? media, posting in Instagram and in Facebook and so on. Perfect. Great. Yes. Okay. Well, keep up the good work. Thank and you. this is the man from Belgium. I was thinking of. It's like the United Nations here. We're from all over. Uh, sir, how did you end up here in Estonia? Um, I moved about uh, one month ago here um, together or to uh, live together with my partner um, and I'm currently also studying a second master in Estonia. Oh, a master's in what? In environmental sciences. Wow, so this is perfect. This is perfect. This fits uh, right in. So in one line, one sentence, why do you think something like this, the World Cleanup Day, is important? We need a healthier, cleaner world. Healthier, cleaner world. Well, we're going to check in with more of the volunteers later, but now let's talk to a marine biologist because this marine biologist is tracking robots in the ocean and its movement and using that data to try and come up with solutions. Take a look at this. We are now joined here by marine biologist Tia Müller. Tia, uh, how much waste and garbage uh, ends up, for example, from Estonia in the Baltic Sea? Well, that's a very tough question uh, because uh, this uh, background information is being uh, gathered at the moment and uh, it's all being mapped and we have only some indications but uh, relatively small data that we have. It already suggests that it is much more than we have expected. It's uh, certainly uh, we talk about tons. Uh, is it uh, more than other countries or is it less? Uh, Estonia is, uh, uh, if you look uh, at the uh, Baltic Sea and the population, then Estonia is uh, very small. The population is also small and uh, our uh, technology and uh, waste uh, management is actually on a quite good level. So I would say that Estonia is not the worst contributor uh, to the waste in the Baltic Sea, that's for sure. What happens to waste in the water? In the water, uh, we can find uh, litter in uh, different uh, uh, marine departments. We can see it uh, in the sea bottom, we can see it uh, in the water column, we can see it uh, on the surface. And uh, we can see it also in uh, coastal areas and also in uh, marine mammals and birds and fishes uh, and uh, all in all living biota. And also we can find it in uh, ice. And the plastic that is in the water never disappears? No, it doesn't disappear, but uh, it's uh, like in the sediment, uh, microplastic uh, has been uh, evaluated and it's like uh, per one square meter, it can be over one million uh, microplastic particles nowadays already in some areas. Uh, so it's, uh, it's quite awful that actually what's going on. It doesn't disappear anywhere. We do know that there are, in the ocean, there are quite large garbage islands, as they call it. What exactly are those and how big are they? Uh, they are relatively big and uh, there are like five or six of those. The biggest one is uh, more than size of uh, France, but it's not, a, it's not a dense area. It's like a little soup. They say that it's uh, there due to currents, uh, the litter has uh, stayed there and it circles around. So there are like uh, plastic bags and forks just swimming around. And uh, due to uh, uh, due to sun and uh, water movement, they just uh, degrade into smaller pieces. And uh, the, the smaller they get, the harder it is uh, to remove it. How does the garbage end up in the waters? Uh, it's very easy. Uh, it uh, comes all from the people and uh, people go to the coastal areas and uh, to the beaches and they leave little there. Also the rivers uh, bring a lot of uh, uh, garbage into the sea and uh, also uh, a lot of uh, comes from the ships and uh, marine uh, uh, activities like uh, fishing and uh, aquaculture. But yeah, m mostly it's uh, human factor that just uh, either throws it literally or it just uh, goes uh, 
on purpose that it's like lost uh, during winds and uh, during storms also it can just uh, go into the sea. Well, thank you very much, Tia Müller, marine biologist, and good luck with your studies. Thank you. Thank you so much for that great report. And it's always amazing to see those images from under the water when you see the trash that's thrown in and lying at the bottom of the um, under the water. It just looks terrible and uh, they're doing great work tracking that. And hopefully with movements like this, that will change. Now, one thing we're focusing on this year on World Cleanup Day is cigarette butts. There are seven trillion cigarette butts thrown away every year. And 4.5 trillion of that seven trillion they are not recycled, they are dumped, they end up back in nature in some way or another, which is a staggering amount. So we're focusing a lot on that this World Cleanup Day and you'll hear more reports on it later in the programme and later in the day. But one very simple idea is a thing that is called the trash pocket. Because when you have a little cigarette butt, rather than flicking it on the ground, what about a little pocket to put it in? Check this out, pocket. I'm now happy to welcome uh, Patrick uh, from the Trash Pocket team. Hi. Hi, hi. Hello. Nice. Well, let's start off by asking uh, why should smokers carry ashtrays with them? Well, because the ashtray, the portable ashtray is the most convenient way to, to be in the butt. Uh, so, it's, you know, it's easy, it's fresh, it's, uh, you can have it wherever you are and so on. So, yeah. That's, that's, that's why. And it's also sanitary. Yeah. But how does the trash pocket work? Doesn't the cigarettes start to smell in it? No, it doesn't because you, uh, like the, uh, this is our model, uh, the craft paper one. And on the, when you, you can push, you can put uh, the, the distinguished cigarette down here. And when you close it and uh, snap it, then it doesn't smell anything. So very convenient and very easy way to, to be in the butt. How long can you use one of these trash pockets? Well, it can be used for a long, long time. So it's very reusable. You can use it uh, for hundreds of packets of cigarettes. So it's, uh, it's a really reusable product and uh, the best way, yeah. What inspired you to develop such a thing? We have been working with this uh, for one and a half year, uh, started in Sweden, and now we are, uh, have the international aim. And uh, it's, uh, our big aim is to, to come inside the spots where cigarettes are being sold. Uh, and now with our collaboration with Let's Do It World, we are going to launch this Let's Be In The Buds campaign, starting up in Nairobi at 23rd of October. So it's going to be a nice journey this year. Uh, and the peak will be at the World Cleanup Day next year. 2021. That sounds really great. Uh, thank you for this uh, interview and good luck with your business. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Patrick, for that and to our reporter, Kelly. Now, we're staying with the issue of cigarette butts because, as you heard him allude to there, it's one of uh, the huge problems of the environmental issues in today's world. And one campaign that's been run here is a very clever one. It's by a group called Zavon BBDO. Silvar, over to you. Tell us about this. Everybody can help catch the cigarette butts. Take action and join World Cleanup Day on the 19th of September. We're joined by Silver Lasik from Zavod BBDO. Silver, what role does your company play in achieving more sustainable future? 
Uh, well, first I would say that uh, we are the partner of uh, World Cleanup Day uh, from the very beginning, from 2016, uh, when we uh, helped help to start establish this brand. But uh, on overall terms, uh, we, we all try to improve uh, day by day and uh, we try to come up with different initiatives uh, that uh, helps us do it. Why do you support World Cleanup Day and Let's Do It World? Uh, because we believe that uh, change is possible and uh, if we see around and we see a lot of, uh, lot of uh, thinking that uh, shouldn't be part of the uh, 21st century, so uh, we as a communication agency and creative agency uh, can definitely help to uh, change something. I saw clips that raise awareness about cigarette butt pollution made by a company. Many people probably don't know that cigarette butts take about 15 years to disintegrate. So what's, what's the creative idea behind those clips? The creative idea behind those clips is uh, that uh, if, you, uh, if you think a bit more what the cigarette butts are doing, then uh, it's uh, basically a threat of the environment and a threat of uh, all the living uh, animals in there, in the seas, in the beaches, in the forests. So uh, uh, we portrayed it, uh, we portrayed uh, the cigarette butts as uh, some shady characters who is lurking uh, behind the corners and in the parks and try to uh, gain uh, some uh, supremacy in the world uh, to uh, basically destroy the world, destroy the, uh, all the living animals. Animals. So basically, this is a, they try to take over the world, and uh, now uh, the nature will strike back. As usual, nature uh, tries to strike back, but uh, as uh, human beings uh, with their uh, pollution is so much more powerful, then uh, nature uh, can't handle it anymore. So uh, our call to action is that uh, nature already strikes back, uh, but we are missing your part in there. Do you have any inspirational words for other companies around the world on how to achieve a more sustainable future? I think that uh, one is definitely join the World Cleanup Day. Uh, if you are a creative agency, then uh, you can easily come up with your own solutions, you can uh, propose, because uh, the idea behind the marketing of the World Cleanup Day has always been uh, it's open. Uh, you can uh, take our ideas, make them better and uh, share those and uh, so it goes. Because uh, we here don't know what ca can work in uh, Japan or Guatemala or whatever. But uh, if you are uh, located there, you can do it. If you are any other kind of company, you can uh, do something as well. Because uh, uh, when you start to think uh, that uh, maybe if I do this kind of thing, uh, can it uh, change something? in the world, then you can uh, pretty easily and pretty quickly come up with uh, new ideas that help, uh, that help uh, change something. And I think that uh, the uh, last spring was a good uh, example, or I would say that it was a good time in this way, so people started to think why we do some certain things and why can't we do it the other way. Because uh, let's say that uh, if you uh, uh, come up with a uh, initiative that uh, half of your people are working from home all the, every day. This means that in the uh, future maybe uh, we can reduce the uh, carbon print of the uh, transportation. So we don't need so much uh, uh, cars, we don't need so much public transport in this way and this helps to uh, protect the environment in the end. Silver Klasik from Zavod PBDO, uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Silver Lasik from Zavod. Uh, such a creative agency, advertising agency, who have been working for many years, right from the beginning with the World Cleanup Day and really helping us get the message out there. I know they've won awards uh, in connection with our campaigns with World Cleanup Day because, as you could see from that video clip, the work is so creative, so original, and we really appreciate that collaboration. So thank you so much to our friends there. And keep up the great work. I love those little puppets. They were fantastic. Well, now let's head across the world to the United States. States of America and we're going to talk to a man who is the founder of a company called Literati. This is a very clever app that can be downloaded for iPhone or for Android where you photograph litter on the ground you're picking up and it goes into your profile. The more litter you pick up the more points you get there are leaderboards and all that kind of thing but as well as it being a bit of fun and a way of cataloging the litter that you're cleaning up it's also a powerful tool for 
uh, communities, for uh, companies, for governments to track litter and get hard data because it's very clever what the company does. They take all the metadata, that is all the information that is stored when you take a photograph. Because when you take an image on your iPhone, it stores the GPS location, the time you took it, um, the, the person who took it, all this information. People can use this to find out in their cities, okay, most of the trash is being dumped at 4 a.m. on Saturday night outside this takeaway or whatever the case may be. So by knowing these statistics and this information, you can really target the problem and strategize perfectly to try and combat it. So let's find out more about this by going over to the USA to talk to Jeff from Literati. It all started on a walk in the woods with my two kids. My daughter, who was four at the time, noticed this plastic tub of cat litter lying in a creek. And she looked at me and she said, Daddy, that doesn't go there. And it was this eye-opening moment. Um, and when she said that, it reminded me of when I was a kid. I used to go to camp and the camp director would say, quick, everybody go pick up five pieces of litter. So you'd get a couple hundred kids, each picking up five pieces. Within a few minutes, we had a spotless camp. And I thought, why not apply that crowdsourced cleaning model to the planet? So that was the inspiration for starting Literati. And what began with me taking one photo of a cigarette has now grown into a community in 165 countries, a community that has collectively mapped, cataloged, and picked up about six and a half million pieces of litter. You know, once that photo is taken and uploaded to the cloud, we run machine learning models on it, using computer vision to understand what is the object, what is the material, what is the brand, where is it located, when was it taken, and so when you think about the simplicity of a photo supplemented with the sophistication of analytics that can provide insight, you can start to get to the root of the problem. So the users who have the app, they're picking up the rubbish as a feel-good factor, they're doing their part for the planet, um, and they can catalog it, look back on what they've done. But then who uses the data? Is it local authorities? Is it businesses? Who are you giving this to to use? All of the above. So the first story of impact occurred when a bunch of students in California used Literati to pick up 1,247 pieces of litter just on their schoolyard. And they learned from the data that the most common type of litter were the plastic straw wrappers from their own cafeteria. So these kids went to their principal and said, why are we even buying straws? And they stopped. That's an example of how the data can lead to actual change. Or in the city of San Francisco, the city wanted to understand what percentage of litter came from cigarette butts. Why? To create a tax on all cigarette sales. Our data was used to not only define percentage, but also help empower this tax of about 40 cents per pack, which generates $4 million a year in annual revenue for the city of San Francisco to clean itself up. So those are some examples of who's using the data and how it's being used. What has made you so passionate about this, Jeff? Uh, there's a million different things you could be doing. Why this? I'll tell you the truth, Colm. Like, I'm not passionate about litter. I'm not passionate about waste. What I am passionate about is leaving this place better than I found it. Thank you very much, Jeff, and the best of luck with Literati. It was great talking to you. That's one of the best things about this job is that we are talking to experts and people who are passionate, passionate more than anything, all over the world, from uh, people who are activists to marine biologists to ordinary families, community leaders, and uh, like our lovely volunteers here. Hey, everybody. <laughs> They're getting better. They're getting better and better. We still have so much to come throughout the day here on the World Cleanup Day show. We are broadcasting every two hours for 15 or 20 minutes. This is the end of this show, but check back in with us in around an hour and a half. We'll be live again with more updates from the biggest civil movement on the face of this planet, the World Cleanup Day show. So we'll see you again soon, guys. Yes! Cue to cheer. <laughs> see you guys.